willing to be a Christian, would you call yourself a resistant non-believer or a, a non-resistant uh, non-believer? I was a non-resistant believer for a long time. And then I started thinking about it. And then I was like, why am I doing this? And I couldn't come up with any good reason. So I decided not to believe. Okay, that's uh that's perfectly okay. I can I can understand that. Um so with with that said, do you think that uh I am in a misunderstanding or maybe I'm deceived for following Christ? Um I mean it depends. Like if you think the earth was created six thousand years ago, then uh there's no good reason to think that's true. And even if, well, my interpretation of the book says that, I don't find that to be a good reason uh, either. But if you just believe in the, if you just are a Christian, then I don't think it's super rational. And I don't think there's really good um, standing for believing in it because it's literally just hearsay by people okay. that weren't there. So... Okay, so I guess you're more so on the side of uh, resistant, and you do think that I could maybe be uh, in a misunderstanding for following something, I guess, or following Christ, right? I don't know if I would even call it a misunderstanding, because your justifications may be, like, totally consistent. I wouldn't okay. say that they're necessarily good justifications, but, like... I don't go around saying that there's something wrong with people that believe in uh, um, Christianity. I don't okay. think that some people are are really edgy and they say stuff like uh, uh, religion is a mental illness or whatever. Yeah, I don't. I don't do that. So okay, <laughs> but Tate says it. <laughs> yeah. Um. I guess. Uh... My next question is, do you believe that there's anything beyond the physical world? Uh, no. Okay. Does that make so, me a material girl? Maybe, I don't know, but. I, I don't, I don't get into all that. I just like to use layman terms and, uh, in ways that I can maybe help anybody understand, but okay. Um, so without asking any. I guess, questions uh, to find out. Do you believe that uh, morality is subjective? Um, <clears throat> my instincts tell me that, yeah, it might be. Um, lately, I've been thinking, I need to run this by somebody who does philosophy, like maybe Danny. But, you know, mm. I most people, and this idea comes from Hume, and some people don't, like a lot of people that argue against secularists like me, they use yeah. Hume's logic that um, you can't, uh, wait, is that Hume? Is Hume the one that said, um, um, was that Hume? So, sorry, I, I, was, I, was, I was having an argument in my head, but yeah, the problem of induction, that comes from Hume, right? Somebody in the comment section tell me if I'm crazy. But they use that to say like science can never justify naturalism or naturalism can't justify itself or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But Hume also is the one who gave us the idea of you cannot derive an ought from an is. Well, morality is defined as actions you ought to take. And so you cannot say, well, God is the objective standard. So we ought to follow him objectively. It comes from, it's like, wait a minute, you're deriving an ought from an is. So do we like Hume or do we do we not like Hume for this? Um, so that's kind of I, I've always sort of felt that it's probably subjective. Um, some people okay. that are secularists argue that there are moral facts, but then mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here going, well, and I, this is basically just me thinking out loud. I don't I don't write like I, I do a lot of writing and I make I produce videos, but I don't do anything about this because I don't consider myself an expert. Um, but okay. even from that perspective, if morality, I mean, I'm just going to repeat myself, if morality is what we should do, but you can't derive an ought from an is, then it would always have to be subjective, would it not? That's just how I feel. Okay. And 
I can I, I agree with you. Uh, if it is purely naturalistic, you would have no way of, like you just mentioned, uh, deriving. Because when you when you say that there's moral facts as a secularist, you just said you're deriving an ought from an is. You're assuming that's a good thing, and then trying to justify what you're assuming. It's a circular argument. So I, I completely agree with what you're saying. Um, so I'm going to try and maybe explain this. Do you, if morality is subjective, that would make reason subjective. Do you agree? No. Okay. So how do we come to, I guess, a conclusion that this is right or this is wrong? Um, it, 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 it's still being subjective, whatever conclusion you come to. But how do we come to that? You're saying is, is reason subjective? Yeah. Well, I guess I'm not totally sure what you mean by that. I mean, it, re reason is the, the mental tool we happen to have that helps guide us toward something that best corresponds with reality, toward the truth or whatever. I mean, other animals reason. I think the ability to reason, I don't think that's subjective, but I mean, I guess some people can have good and bad reasoning. Mm. So that's where I'm like, well, I'm not really sure what you mean, I guess. Okay, so. I, I would uh, say I the put... ability to reason isn't subjective. Okay, then then you, you kind of, ah, uh, man, I don't want to. Okay, so when you do agree that there's something to reason that has to be objective. Yeah. Then that, that has to come somewhere separate from a human mind, because if the human that mind... comes from reality. We experience reality, and if, rea if reality really exists and if if natural law is governed by consistent forces then we should be able to arrive at the truth if the universe were random then it would be unintelligible but it is intelligible okay so so there there is uh supernatural forces so it's beyond the physical no i never said anything is supernatural i said the universe is governed by like uh forces okay where Okay. I guess let me just ask, do you believe that truth exists? Well, I believe reality exists. Truth, I don't believe in some sort of um, platonic truth, you know, where, where like numbers and facts and whatever exist in some sort of separate realm. Um, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't believe in that. But it's like when people are like, well, how do you justify blank? It's like, it's based in reality. Reality exists. I've, I've never asked anybody, do you think the universe exists? And none of them have ever said no. And then I say, okay, is it a fact that the universe exists? Sure. Okay, well, then there are going to be subsets of other truths embedded within this universe we exist in. And if we're part of it, then I think we can interact with it and understand things about it. Okay. I, I would kind of argue that this is what you said earlier is a uh, ought is you're saying that we we can we can experience reality and then come to conclusions but I'm not, the con I'm not telling anybody what they should do i'm telling you what we can do okay so 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 you do believe truth exists it's just it, in any okay i i guess yes, but i don't believe in a kind of platonic truth that's what i was trying to say okay i don't necessarily know what platonic means well like plato have you ever heard of plato's theory of forms no so it's like this idea that plato believed that um for example if all round objects in the universe were, were destroyed then mm -hmm. roundness would not cease to exist and that's because it is a form and all things are the, the forms are perfect and unchanging and everything that exists is just a, an imperfect mishmash, a collage of the forms which really do exist. And then there are some people that think that 
math is like this, that numbers really exist and things like that, but they're, mm -hmm. they're abstractions. So I'm, okay. I have a really brilliant friend who's a computer scientist who can talk a lot about this kind of stuff. Neither he or I believe in this platonic version of like facts or reality like that, but that's what I mean. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically everything is just boiled down to human conception. Um, cause that, that's, that's the, the only, only way I'm able to know about it and talk to you about it. Exactly. But... And sure. Okay. So, so when I say truth, this is within what you're conceptualizing with your brain from whatever place you're in. And, and if truth does exist, like, uh, okay, well, I guess if somebody says one plus one equals two, and then somebody says one plus one equals three, who is wrong and why? Well, again, math isn't real. So one plus one equals two. That's, that's not exactly, yeah, I'm not a philosopher. So like, I, my ability to use the terms perfectly is going to be uh, not there. But to me, that's kind of like something that's true by definition. Like, why is a bachelor not married? Because mm -hmm. they're not married. Like, that. there's nothing else to it. But is a bachelor something that, like, is that part of the fundamental structure of the universe? No, I think the standard model of particle f particles is, are, are the only things that really exist. And, mm -hmm. and those other types of things, like, uh, apparently, math grammar is a real thing. So there are rules in grammar. And like, it works for us, but it's just a tool that we use, like in our minds. So we can, there's nothing wrong, I don't think with my worldview in saying that humans make stuff up, we, we make up languages and, and things like that, that have their own set of rules. Yeah. But to argue one plus one equals two is true, therefore, something else, now you're arguing for this sort of platonic weird dimension of, uh, of, I, I don't know, non physical yeah. truth. I, okay, I, don't, now, I don't know what that what that even is. Okay, well, uh, again, uh, you just you just uh, you agreed with me earlier that reason is objective. And it's re if our reason ability is to reason is objective. Or okay, or yeah, if our ability, oh, well, then that would, that's just you're going around it. Then is is reason objective or subjective? Well, I think that that question is sort of invalid, right? It's like it, okay, it's like um, saying. I, well, I, I don't know. I can't think of an example, but I think our ability to reason is objective, but is reason objective? I don't think that that's actually an appropriate way to discuss reason because it's reason is a verb. It's what you do. And so to say that it exists or that it's objective, well, I, what, what, it, what does that mean? That's, that's, that's like, is, is falling down a flight of stairs objective? Well, I mean, the laws of gravity, I, I hold true and are universal. And uh, everybody that that walks up to the stairs and, and trips will do that. But I think we're kind of, I don't know, I think that maybe it's like some sort of weird category error or something. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so when I talk about reason being objective, I'm talking about laws that go into reason to determine what is reasonable. Right. So excluded like, middle, non-contradiction, and uh, the, I don't yeah. know what the other one is. Yeah. Bas basically just how, one. I'm not sure, dude. I, I think, yeah, rule of excluded middle, uh, law of non-contradictory, I, I don't know. It, again, I don't. Oh, law of identity. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I just remembered. You're good. Um. Yeah, I, so I think, yes, we have mental heuristics, we come up with languages, um, mm -hmm. and we, we have ideas in our brains, but all we're doing is describing the reality that's in front of us. This yes. is 
a camera lens, this is a fake cigarette made out of paper, right? Okay, so I can use the laws of logic to tell you that these two things are separate things. But if all conscious creatures in the universe ceased to exist, this still would not be what this is. I don't know why people think this is profound in any sort of way. It's just that when, when you argue that that's something else, like something special, to me, you're arguing that we literally create the universe. It doesn't exist if we don't exist. Okay. And I find that to be just a bunch of baloney. Get off my lawn. <laughs> so uh, I guess what, what I'm saying, yes, we, we, we using reason is objective, uh, just as I guess you could say living is objective. I know I'm alive right now, but but if reason isn't objective, if there wasn't laws to reason, you couldn't pick up that camera lens and say it's a camera lens because I could just as well say, no, that camera lens is actually the Eiffel Tower or it's a lamp. It, but but we inherently know, like, okay, for example, I've thought many times to myself throughout my life, and, and I just now realized, like, as a child grows up and develops, if God is, well, no, not if God's not real, but if, if reason is subjective, then how would that baby learn how to do anything? First, we'd have to teach it that two things can't, be true at once or or two things that contradict each other couldn't be true at once and then so on but then that in itself it's like okay well how do you even determine if that's true right but but a child can grow up and inherently knows that if you tell it this and then also tell it this and it's something that contradicts that child's going to think to itself wow uh th that doesn't make sense mom or dad or whatever um so, so we inherently all have this truth, this ability to, uh, to reason in us, and we don't have to be taught us or, or taught it. Yeah, but animals have that. I, I would disagree. I'd say that animals just have, they just live by instinct. So, so oh, as a, oh, a guy, oh, well, oh, okay. So I, I think there's a couple things here we can, we can, I can tell you about that disprove that. First of all, um, if a person never it is never spoken to until beyond the age of about five or seven they never learn how to speak a language they can learn how to say words but they never ever ever learn how to use grammar okay right? yeah. so they can't now in their heads they can understand that two things aren't the same thing but to me, that just tells us that it's just something that's in our brains. And the human brain is very large and it has very many more connections than the brains of other organisms. But we're just mammals with brains, like other mammals with brains. We have awesome brains, but they are just brains. But then also people who are, um, that, that learn a language, there's literally nothing wrong with them. You wouldn't believe the weird specific types of um, like uh, cognitive disorders that people can get. I just learned in a book a few days ago, The Language Instinct by Steven Pinker, that I, I'm going to forget what the grammatical terms are. But if you have a stroke in a particular region of your brain, you completely lose the ability to think in specific metaphors, but only for specific cases. So like people cannot grasp the concept of running through the forest but they can understand using that term like like using the word through in some other similar ish context they can yeah. i tried to i tried to find that in the book the other day and i i can't find it i've been driving myself crazy because i'm looking for it because i was listening to it on audio on audible and i thought that was so interesting but there are there are conditions there have been reported conditions where people cannot recognize the left half of their own body. That just does that's the weirdest thing ever, right? Yeah. So I think that tells us that it's literally nothing but we have our mind is physical, it manifests out of a brain, our brain, a brain is a physical thing, it interacts with the physical world. And these, this ability we have to communicate about the world and about experience 
is really interesting, but I don't think it's anything special or like imbued in us. We just have the ability to yap about it. And for all we know, for all we know, when you hear the birds yapping, they're, they're, they're giving a dialogue. Who knows? I kind of doubt it, but maybe they are. Okay. Uh, okay. So I guess my, my biggest point is if it is purely just human mind, just, just in a brain, and that's the only way we're able to, I guess, experience anything. Who am I to tell you that anything you tell me or anybody else is right or wrong? Anything. You mean, I, I don't you mean morally right or wrong or correct or incorrect? No, anything. That That's why I said truth. I, like, I, I, I don't care okay. what well, it is. If it's a, well, as if far it's as correct truth. or incorrect, again, I would, like, people have like people have different experiences but they pretty much all converge in the same direction that's why we're able to do things like science and form form organizations and do government and local politics or whatever but like some people like like we know the difference between being like mentally like there's something mentally wrong with you like like i said those like specific weird disorders yeah. we know like you can definitely say yes this person is suffering from schizophrenia the ideas that they're that they're having aren't true there's some sort of weird paranoia there um and so the justification for that is again i would just say mind body environment interactions mm -hmm. um and then we discuss it through language i guess okay uh, all right and but who's i mean if i came up and said that this schizophrenic person isn't schizophrenic am am i wrong and and if i am uh who who says that i'm wrong because it's just another mind against another mind there, there's well, no in a case like that i would suggest you well first of all you could test it right like this this was the scientific revolution uh, I think we have excellent ways of figuring out like mere claims don't prove or disprove anything, which is why mm -hmm. I get really annoyed when I talk to like apologists and philosophy bros. It's like, cool argument. What can we do with this information? Literally nothing uh, most of the time. So um, yeah, you could do an investigation or you could, I mean, I guess, by way of consensus, you could figure it out as well, because the odds of one person being wrong are actually pretty good, but the odds of a thousand people being wrong in the exact same way aren't very good. Okay, and again, that, that's the ought is. You're assuming that they're in the wrong. Who is to say that whatever experiment you're doing... It's not an doing, ought is. I'm not telling anybody what they should do. Well, well you're, you're assuming that we can just automatically determine by testing, but that's to say that we know what we're doing when we begin to test because I could do a test this way and you could do a test or I can do a test this way and you do a test that way. And again, I mean, if I get this kind of results and you get this kind of results, it's just human conception. So I can't tell you you're wrong and you can't tell me I'm wrong. And that, that's what I'm saying. You couldn't begin to even do anything unless we there was some kind of inherent truth that we all have and I, and I, I know and I think that I think that that truth is reality. I think reality exists and is governed by certain by by natural laws. Okay and, and that's okay what if I tell you I don't think it's reality? Am I am I right or wrong? I I would say you're wrong but you need to offer me what you think it actually is. Yes, but I couldn't even begin to offer you because I have no justification of what I'm telling then I, you. Is then right I have wrong. no reason to believe you. You could be right, but I have no reason to believe you. Like I could claim there is or there is not life on Jupiter's moon Europa. I don't know. And neither do you. And neither okay, of yeah. us has a reason to, let's just say I say yes, you say no. Neither one of us can give the other person a good reason to believe it. Yeah, but that 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 is not 
relative at all to us here on earth in this situation like we're having right now. We're just we're just talking. We're able to talk and discuss. You, what but because you said when I asked you why should I believe you, you said I can't even give you a reason or I I can't remember what I asked you, but I said like, okay, well, what's your justification or something? And you said, I can't even begin to give you a reason. And then I said, then there's no reason for me to believe you. That, that's what I'm saying. Uh, my point is, is that if it's just brain against brain, human conception against my human conception against yours, there's no justification to what is truth, what is incorrect or what is correct or what is right or what is wrong. And that's that's what? my point. Yeah. Okay. So, like again, I, like we do these tests to discover something, whether it's true or not. How could we begin to do the tests if if we don't? You couldn't agree on anything. But we all have. Okay. Let let me. But but when does this ever happen? Okay. Like right when, now, we're when, having. A... When, when can you give me an example? Yeah, we're having a conversation right now, and we both understand that we couldn't talk at the same time and understand each other, because because we we know that's a truth that exists beyond uh, just physical, and we we inherently yes, understand. Yes, and we, and I would say we know this because to know to have knowledge or like what is it justified true belief? That's what it means to know something. We mm -hmm. can justify this. Okay, uh, I I. I guess I heard you talk about you don't like philosophy. Um, that that's fine. I guess let me ask you this: um, Do you have a feeling that your life has a meaning? I think that way. Yeah. Okay. And do you think that we could we could assume that most people? do think that their life has a meaning Mo most people right Be because if they if they felt like they didn't yeah yeah and i don't know where you're going with this but i'm gonna preface this with you're talking about opinions right now uh, okay well i'm just talking about this uh okay so the majority of people that exist we we all have some kind of understanding or feeling that life has meaning to it. And then also we have these deep moral obligations that make us feel certain things are right and wrong. And so when we say that evolution is true and that it's purely materialistic, we are denying these deep feelings that we have. We're denying- no, not. Okay, explain to me how life has a meaning if it's just purely physical. There is no supernatural. I... No, that's not what you said. You said that evolution can't can't justify that people have those beliefs. Yes, it can. I can't use evolution to prove to you that they're true, but I can use it to demonstrate that people have those beliefs because you have a brain that is capable of forming those kinds of ideas. And that brain has been given to you by Charles Darwin. Whose birthday was just a few days wow. ago, by the way. All right. So, so we get these feelings from evolution. Is, is that what you're... You don't think that emotions and instincts and, and feelings are manifestations of our brains? Brain-body interactions, really. Uh, I don't think it comes from evolution. I think it comes from something beyond our brains because we're able to intuitively understand things without even having to discuss them. That means you think that something that is not our body or our brain is controlling us. Uh, not necessarily. It's an, it's an objective standard that we all adhere to without even knowing it. That's why when I asked if what? does truth what? exist? Okay. It, anyway, my, my is, point is what, is, what did that, what is it then? Or what did that even mean? Okay, when I say that, when I, when I asked you about truth, if it exists, if, if truth doesn't exist, and that's a truth claim, and it's self-defeating, but if truth does exist, whatever it be, it would have to be determined upon, if it was just materialistic, it was just a brain against a brain, 
Again, it's your brain against another brain. There's no justification of determining whether that's actually true or not. And that's what I'm saying. We wouldn't begin to understand or even do anything. But again, I, I, I didn't... So, says, says who? If, okay, the, says who? if the universe is merely just a material thing, mm -hmm. which would be a fact, then we can't figure out what the facts are? Like... How does that make yeah. any sense? Yes, yes, because we have no standard to go to to determine what is right or wrong other than our own brain. That's now why you're I mentioned... talking about morals again. Do you mean correct or incorrect? No, no, I'm talking about standard of just truth in general, anything being true or false, not just morals directly. The standard would be reality. We live in a material universe. That would be that that's a that's a I don't know if you call this an axiom, but it's a like that's a that would be a fact and if we live in this universe and that's a matter of fact and it's purely material governed by natural forces okay. then all of our knowledge is grounded in that reality and th this is what i'm saying it's just <sighs> to even begin that statement that it's grounded in reality if it's just physical who am i to tell you that you're not wrong or that you're right there we have no, we have methods and systems to check that i mean if you're talking about there's no justification for a priori assumptions fine you don't have them either i i i have justifications for believing in god uh and and that's why yeah, of course, uh, that's something that I asked want the to first question well, what if i what if i tell that, you you're wrong that should not have to do um i'm, I'm not going to be uh i'm not going to shift myself into the position where my life has no meaning and everything's pointless because because if, if it's just materialistic so, I want... <laughs> so if a god exists there's no way to tell if you're right or if i'm right no if a god does exist then there is a way and, and I mean, we're adhering to that right now. Okay, so did you see what just happened there? If I think a material universe really exists and that's it, mm -hmm. um, then, but you said, yeah, but how, if two people disagree, then you have no justification. And I said, yes, the justification would be reality and we have checks in place to be able to, to see whose idea best conforms with reality. And you said, no, you got to have God to ground it in. Okay, I don't believe in God. So we have okay. the exact same problem that you said we have in my worldview. I don't believe there's a God. So how do we even begin to, 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 to resolve this? And you just said, oh, well, I have arguments for God's existence. I have arguments that a material reality ex exists and that we can ground our like experiences in it. So okay. I, you, there's nothing new has been, you haven't, you haven't uh, brought anything new to the table, I don't think. Okay, you mentioned that we have ways to test. Uh, I don't, I guess I'm not wording it very well. You, you couldn't say that the way you're testing to see if what's true is right or wrong. That's what I'm and saying. You and you can't say whether or not you're the, the claim of your God being the objective grounding is right or wrong. And, and this is where I would say that we're having a discussion right now and we wouldn't be able to if there wasn't some kind of truth that was beyond the human mind because... Yeah, reality. Can... That... <sighs> reality, okay. Do, just, do you just think really that if cool. humans didn't exist, you... the universe would exist? Because I do. The, yeah, the universe, okay, the universe would exist. Okay. I, I guess, we exist let in me the universe. Add, we experience it with our with our minds, and that's how we can come to understand things about it. But if it's just our minds, nobody can tell somebody else they're wrong. Anyway, okay. So I've so, I've answered that several times. If it's just God, then you can't tell me which God it is, or really convince me that any of them exist. There. Nana nana boo boo. Okay, I was going to say, um, we, 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 most of us that are living right now all have this inherent feeling that life matters. 
we also believe that there's deep moral obligations that we live by. We believe that certain stuff is wrong and we believe certain stuff is right. Like, morally. And then... So if you believe in we, Santa, he really exists? Are you, are you going to uh, be able to give me anything other than than our, our, our fee-fees? Okay, well, that, that's why I asked you, do you believe that life has... Do, do you think life has meaning? Yeah, that's my opinion. Okay, so so life doesn't actually have meaning. I don't know. I don't really think objectively it does because those are opinions that we have in our brains and opinions aren't part of the fabric of the universe. Okay, I guess let me ask you, um, do you think that there's bad in the world? I, th I believe that there is, yeah. That's okay, a belief you, that I have. Do you think that the world needs to be a better place? And... I prefer that it were, yeah. Okay. And I guess I would ask you, how do we get to that better place in the world? Reason. Yes, but I mean, if it's just human brain, I can say your reason's wrong and you have no reason to tell me my reason's wrong. Yes, I can. This is the ought is part. You're assuming that reason is reason. It's it's circular. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. What? Uh, okay, so then justify reason. I would say it's recursive, not circular. Because here's the thing. You're arguing that you can't use reason to justify it. Which means you can't either. Because whatever you're going to tell me is the solution, you're going to be giving me a reason to believe you. So you haven't, again, you've identified perhaps a real problem, perhaps an imaginary problem, and your solution is no solution. So you think we can get to a better place in the world with reason. What, what would some of this reason be? What would some... Like, like name, on how name we that. fix the world, I just, I just think that reason would be like one of the best tools we could use, right? I mean, yes. does God have reasons for telling us to do this or that? Uh, yes. Um, okay, well, apparently reason is a sufficient tool to figure out uh, what good and bad reasons to do things Oh, I'm not saying it's I'm not saying it's not, but when you say it's just purely physical, then you're saying that it isn't a good tool. It, it, anyway, that no, I never I, I said the opposite of that. Okay, what is one of the things that you would come up with reason that could lead the world to a better place? So just name one thing. That I'll that humans objectively have the capacity to suffer and that nobody can give a rational argument that it's okay for me to cause you suffering, even though I wish not to suffer myself. And so uh, you could argue that that's an objective truth that humans have this capacity to suffer, right? And then you could argue, yes, if we do things that minimize human suffering, that leaves the world in a better place. And I could argue that it, it well, it leaves us in a better place. I shouldn't say the world, because um, yeah. as we get better, a lot of things get worse actually. But this is like literally true from a purely materialistic biological reductionism stance because it would benefit our species. We would literally see like positive gains in our species. No, no species engages in self-destructive behavior, except humans for whatever reason. Um, yeah. Uh, because some, some bimbo ate an apple. <laughs> Am I right? Um, so yeah. Well, if, 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 uh, if morality is subjective, I mean, uh, who's to say that suffering is a bad thing? If, if morality is subjective, then who's to say that suffering is a bad thing? Yeah. So like, I guess, you, I guess not. If that, if that's the case, I believe in a God that says kill everybody. And who are you to say that I'm wrong? Uh, somebody who believes in the truth. And believe that I, yeah, truth. I believe in the truth. I believe in God, and God divinely uh, revealed these words to me, and He said, "Kill everybody." All uh, right. Do you have uh, uh, Do you have any evidence for that? Yeah, it's it, it's personally revealed to me. It's actually okay. it's actually revealed to everybody. It's written on their hearts, but blasphemers and wicked people choose to deny it.
Prove me wrong. Uh, so you're kind Prove of uh, you're discerning away from the point that I was bringing up. Prove me wrong. Uh, well, I I mean, who's to say that's wrong? Because morality is subjective. So you're you're actually not no. Wrong. I no. This is this. I no 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 no. I'm arguing that uh, a a divine creator objectively revealed to me that mm -hmm. that this should happen. So okay. There we do go. you know what faith means? Do you know to the believe definition? in something even though there's no evidence? Ooh, okay. That's where do you think that said? What? Where, where do you think that that definition said? Dictionaries. You... Okay, let me let me tell you what faith uh, actually is. Um. What what's a dictionary that you would trust? I got my computer right here. Well, okay, so in Hebrews chapter eleven, when we use the word faith, this is this is what I mean by faith. Faith is I don't the subscribe to your worldview. Okay. Exactly. And I don't subscribe to yours. So who am I to say you're wrong? There's no justification. That's yeah, what you I'm can't you can't tell me I'm wrong. Therefore, I'm going it's to act out the divine will of my creator and kill everybody. Exactly. So, so yeah, that's why so I believing you, in a God solves nothing. Okay, I'm about to explain to you. I, I was trying to explain to you, and then you got off the topic because I, I think you understood where I was going. I asked you, how does the world get to a better place? You said, well, first we have to believe that it's objective that people suffer. Okay, you did the same thing with reason. You're going around it. Is, is suffering a bad thing? Is that objective? If it's not objective, then who it's are you to It's true that people suffer, and it's true that people don't like it. Uh, okay. Is it a bad thing? Is it... Is, well, is people, humans... Well, people objectively bad? hate to suffer. So... Okay, people objectively like to do anything. Like, I mean, that's... Okay. Dude, okay, it, it, forget it. Just forget all of that. I am no longer a materialist. I'm a theist. I believe in the one true God, and his name is Spanky. And he said, kill everybody. There. Mm -hmm. he, is, I def he is defined as the objective standard. Yeah, and you, now you, you, I'm going to go out and kill everybody. And you can't tell me I'm wrong. So believing in a God uh, gets us nowhere. Believing in a God grounds us for what is right and wrong. It grounds us for what's Based true. Based on what? In the thing, the only thing that's eternal, that's always going to exist and has always existed. And you agree that that thing is spanky? No, because he's in space, time, and matter, and space, time, and matter had a beginning. No, he, he's not, actually. He's completely outside of all of that. Really? Yeah. So, uh, okay, it, well, anyway. This, this is his only begotten son. Spanky and, and, actually exists outside of time, space, and matter. And, and then this is where I would say you, you moved away from the topic that I was at because you knew that you were in the wrong. No, Instead, I switched to, to demonstrate that you have not solved this problem. You but just it, somehow thought that your belief system is the only belief system like it that can okay, exist. You, you problem. You said problem. If there's no, if there's nothing beyond the physical, who's to say that the world is bad? Who's to say that it is a problem? And so again, we both have uh, we people both like you and me, I guess. No, people listen, like you we, and yeah. me could say that. And look, you <sighs> define the God you believe in to be the objective standard. I define human well-being to be the objective standard. There. Okay. Now you're going to so, say, what if I don't agree? Okay, well, I define this God as the objective standard, and you don't agree. You have not fixed anything. Theism okay. gets you nowhere. Yes, uh, yes it does, and I'm okay. No, so it you doesn't. Said... I, I'll, give you, I'll give you two minutes. I won't say a single word. You tell me how, even though you can't tell me that uh, the God I believe in is wrong tell me how theism fixes this okay so so theism is you believe in something 
that is beyond the physical. There's something that's always existed and it's always going to exist. And so when you say that everything is purely materialistic, right, I am in no position to tell you that you're wrong on anything. There's no justification beyond my mind against your mind, against my human conception against yours. There's nothing, right? So when I ask you the question, what do you agree that there's evil in the world or bad things in the world? Yes. Do you agree that we need the world needs to be a better place? Yes. Okay, do you believe that morality is objective? You would say no. And then it's like, okay then, who are you to say that the world's evil and that it needs bad when you just said that evil and bad don't actually exist? So when you appeal to secularism to try and make the world a better place, you're taking away the very thing that you're trying to get to. You're cutting your own throat off. You're eliminating any justification of the world of your ways of leading to the world being a better place. Okay, for example, Hitler over in Nazi Germany, or, or Mustache Man, excuse me. He, he, what he thought he was doing was good for the human race. And then say somebody else uh, goes over to Africa and brings a lot of food to the starving or, or people who need food, right? Who's to say that Hitler's better or that the person who fed the starving kids is better if morality is subjective. You have no way of getting to the world being a better place because better place doesn't even exist because morality is subjective. And so th this is when I say your, that- your, your time ran up. Okay. Can I interrupt? Okay. So two things. Absolutely. One, I could define human suffering as being the objective standard, like you define God as being the objective standard. Okay. But let's just ignore that because you didn't even attempt to address what my actual point was. Fine. Let's say that uh, the God I believe in, this one, okay. told Hitler to do all of those things. Okay. You have no argument for why it's wrong now. Okay. I because I appealed to, to an objective standard to say that it should be done. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going like to justify the genocides that the Israelites committed. Okay, do you, so you, do you, you don't do you, actually have a standard? You okay, just, and I'm going to argue that you agree with it as well. No, you, okay, I'm going to I'm going to say that you agree with it as well. Do you believe people should be punished? Do do you believe that people should go to jail for doing something wrong? I don't think that the justice I think we should have a a uh what do you call it? Like a um a rehabilitative system in place um or some sort of other system in place for people because for whatever reason like we look at i just read a book about this too we um like like we know that for example something like 40 percent of people on death row have had like severe traumatic brain injuries right so are they responsible yes but are they also um products of their environment and is it also really deeply unfair yes we we all can understand that so we should have a system in place where we don't just let people that are dangerous run mm -hmm. around but i i certainly don't believe in an eternal punishment because there's nothing that can justify that okay. and i don't believe in uh revenge as a system of justice so if you okay, ask so. me should we have a print like should we have jails and stuff like that yes but i don't like the ones that we or i don't necessarily agree with the system we have in total okay so you agree that no no matter how bad or egregious some uh, some heinous act that somebody's done and has done for a long time should be in jail forever or until he passes i i literally never said that well, I well, said I, we I, should have something in place where we can deal with people who, for whatever reason, are just incapable of coexisting with other people. But I, I, I never said that they should be behind metal bars. I don't necessarily think they should be behind metal bars for life, but I never said that they should coexist with everybody else. Okay. And, and um, if you look at other countries like Norway, which have, like, their prisoners, no matter what they've done, like that guy that took that boat to a private island and killed like 50 some kids. He mm -hmm. has a living room. He has access to internet and books and all kinds of stuff. 
and every criminal gets that kind of um, treatment. And guess what? They have vastly lower recidivism rates than we do, and they have much less violence in general than we do. So I think our system Do they teach sucks. evolution? What? Do they teach evolution? Yes. In, in, in Ireland? Where at? Norway? Oh, Norway? Norway is one of the most secular countries. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> So these people, that that dude who I'm not saying you said anything. I'm just asking a question. That person who went to that island and killed 50 people. Do you think that he should be allowed all these uh, things in his, uh, I guess, in what he should be experiencing? They view uh, they view locking out. somebody in a in a cement room with no real access to like the world, they view that as cruel and unusual punishment. Okay, is not what he did to 50 kids cruel and unusual? Yes. So okay. again, it, if you want to, if you want to create a, a, a society where you, you want to try to have less of that, right, mm -hmm. then then you establish does, does cruel and unusual punishment point. get you to that? Well, we've had about like we have a in this country we have a murder rate that far exceeds any other developed country, right? Mm -hmm. We have our recidivism rates are far beyond other developed countries. So their system actually does work really well, way better than ours. Okay. Well, I certainly don't think the government has the right to decide who lives and who dies. That's insane. Yeah, I'm not I'm not saying that necessarily. I'm just saying that I, I think that somebody who went off to an island and killed 50 kids should be in bars uh, until he does pass. They I don't should think not he... be allowed to to interact with the rest of society. I How agree. How do you the internet without interacting with the rest of society unless it's heavily you can't monitored. kill somebody by right clicking on their profile picture ian jesus fucking christ you said interacting with uh with other people you didn't say anything else that would be interacting with people what does that have to do with killing because uh, okay what, what i'm saying ian, and when you say i find this conversation to be rather shallow and pedantic and i think we're just gonna end it there. <laughs>